Hello there, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in which we're playing as a beautiful but somewhat broken coast. So, like at the start of every campaign, custom game rules, everything is pretty much default. I have no idea what's going to happen, and I like it la like that. But we also have historical AI focuses off, and the mods I'm using are Old World Blues, Play Load Peace Conferences, Color Buttons, Colored Events, State Transfer Tool Mod, as well as the Mod Compilation 2 for Old World Blues. And which, actually, I don't think I've played up here very recently in uh, this part of the Pacific Northwest. We have seven divisions, and they are all 16 combat with, which is, eh, not bad, but we have our ancestors. British Columbia was filled with all sorts before the Great War, and its survivors were no less complex. Indeed, the Pirates of the Broken Coast have all sorts of ancestries, but none of them are better off for it. They all stare down at the bottom of half-empty beer flasks and wish for better days. Eventually, they all throw their caps on the countertop, grab their weapons, and head back into the endless white. Cool. And, let's see, we are... Tribal. So that might make our campaign just slightly more difficult, but let's grab, grab some Ohm's Law. We'll grab some Combat Language, but we'll also grab some Output immediately for Industry Planning. Being Tribal isn't always an easy choice to make, or just easy it doesn't make for an easy campaign words are hard especially in the first two minutes of uh this video but anyways i'm gonna grab two of these at the same time and just slow ahead, go ahead and let time go on after we have pipe guns Ooh, the way i want to go actually let's see fish bone basic melee weaponry nine two three ten one three uh you know what i'm gonna switch these out with this one i want to use melee weaponry for now dynamite as well as support equipment and goodbye. Ship-wise, actually, we, we have some pretty good ships here. Canoe hulls, we have a higher number, so bye-bye. If we have to make ships... Actually, what does our navy look like right now? We have seven ships right now. And we have no capital ships. Hmm. Do these guys have any upgrades? Ooh. Ooh, doesn't look like it. If that's the case, do this then. Do that. Come here and then uh, do that. Maybe do that. Cool. I'll leave five and five, but we'll keep some on convoys for now. That'll be fine. All right, and let's let time go on to see what happens. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and train these guys and grab an Admiral, Graven, Silent Hunter, as well as a Spotter. Cool. Go ahead and train if you need it. And we're doing okay, I, I would say. Oh, uh, we definitely need some more basic melee weaponry. But our ancestors, after the Great War, the natural protection of the mountainous coast became home to a group of, from which all others adapted to our, their culture. Some marines from before the war, stationed defending from the invading Chinese, survived in the mountains after the bombs fell. Various vessels finding themselves stranded became shelter against the harsh winters for the crews. Natives of the land previously under occupation also gained their freedoms here after the bombs fell. All of these people form the fabric of the people in the Broken Coast. But the first group from which all others were assimilated were... Natives of the coast, which you get more mobilization speed and population. Sailors from foreign shores. Uh, let's see, spotting speed, number of ships of first contact, 40%. As well as naval max range factor, or U.S. Marines. Now, I love the Marines. But us navally invading? We might do that somewhat. I mean, I definitely will invade New Victoria, but I think for this campaign, I really want to focus on population. So, natives of the coasts. And now, time for our next focus, the Great Blizzard. Back in Redbeard's day, there was a blizzard so fierce none but he dared sail in the winds. It clouded the sky for years. It s stacked the coast with more snow than ever before or since, and killed thousands. They say the wind howled with the fury of the dead, but Redbeard, that crazy bastardido, never once got so much as frostbite. Well, from Walt, the former pirate captain and owner of the Cap and Cash Bar in Coover. Cool. And we're currently getting 0.96 political power a day. And let's talk about our national spirits. We start with Society of Raiders. Which means we already don't have a lot of manpower. Actually, what is our manpower right now? Or population? 24,000, okay. So we have that. Gives us less division attrition, better winter attrition, and less research speed. We also have coastal terror, which looks really great. Awesome, 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 especially for the Navy. And then we have native settler heritage. Of course, so we just got. So, the Great Blizzard. After the bombs fell, the effects did not leave. A great blackness engulfed the sky, blocking out the sun and casting a Great Blizzard upon the people and the coast. Many died in the cold. Their corpses freezing from the extreme cold in a matter of minutes. Out of the ashes of people born from cruelty managed to survive this by. Fleeing the storm in hopes of returning, we get more speed and planning speed. Burying the storm, only the fittest survive, which we lose or get better at taking less attrition. Or building shelter out of pre-war vessels. I like that. I think we'll go with this one because it we really want things that focus on our divisions and our army. More planning speed is not bad, and more speed, well, that's okay. And why we fight. 
Money's always ruled the broken coast. Much like how the waves dashed against us jagged rocks with fury, so too are many hopes and dreams dashed by pirates simply looking for the next paycheck. Do the people of the broken coast enjoy the endless conflict their way of life provides? Maybe. But perhaps if they were offered an alternative, they might consider it. After all, everyone wants to be ret wants to retire eventually. Well, we'll see about that. Just because we want to doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, let's go ahead and disable backstory decisions. Now we can raid. The sight of our ships on the horizon strikes fear into even the bravest of men. From the farthest part of the endless white to warmer southern waters, our raids are spoken of in hushed whispers and fearful voices. Raiding is an act that will likely incur an aggressive response from our target. We can escalate our raids into larger conflicts and eventually into war. Why we fight. Our ancestors fought and bled for the broken ghosts. The old ways are going and the new ways will lead us to glory. But we need to focus on building ourselves up. What should we focus on? Wealth or slaves? I'll be honest, like, I'm a little worried about manpower for this campaign because we don't have a lot of population. We're tribal. And if I can offset some of the tribal effects on us, and a tribal effect, but tribal effects, tribal doesn't really hurt you. You just can't research as much. So we're going to be down in numbers. So I've, if that's a case, or down in technology, I want as many numbers as possible, so I'm going to go with slaves. Because we love slaves. We love slaves, right? We'll have the moot. Graven the Cruel received his title for a reason. Even by the standards of a nation of raider pirates, his methods are particularly sadistic and cruel. His right-hand man, Ragnar, is much more moderate and aligned with the former leaders of the coast. A moot has been called to summon together the coast and challenge Graven's authority. It'll decide the future of our nation. Bets are already being placed. And we can do the practice raid. Ooh. Yeah, and eventually we can restore the province of British Columbia. Gains all cores on all British Columbian states. Will be known as the White North. Gains beating sent into them. I like beating sent into people. But we get that for 200 days, which is quite a bit. For mine, it's 50% division organization. That's a bit much. I'm not going to lie. Right now, we definitely need more infantry equipment. So hopefully, we can build it up a lot more. Uh, I'm not too keen on making a lot of ships. So let's make sure this goes up to, I don't know. Actually, longboats. Oh, wait, hold on. You're not, you're not, longboats are not capital ships. What did I think of that earlier? No, we have to research them too. Oh, that sucks. Uh, screw that then. There you go. Bye-bye. Cool. I forgot about that. Yeah, capital ships. We have none. That's so sad. How do we not have a capital ship? Begin a scavenging program. We could do that, but the moot. Graven roared in protest as the moot began. His hand clenched tightly around the axe at his belt. It was time to vote for a new ruler. Or so they said. The moot had been organized in secret by a group of disgruntled captains, and now they call upon any and all within the meeting ground to oppose Graven. Ragnar stepped up, causing the gathered raiders to erupt into chaos, and the titan of a man planted his axe into the frozen earth. I will stand against Graven, as he no longer is fit to rule. A chill descended upon these gathered, or upon those gathered, as they watched Graven, his grip tightening as murderous intent burned between his eyes. Graven's victory is in the boat was to be expected. Ragnar won by slim or narrow margin. Alright, so as I've said in other campaigns, I will play as Broken Ghost twice, so no matter who I choose, we'll we'll play as both Graven as well as Ragnar. But as you can probably tell from the title of this video and the thumbnail, at least maybe to a degree. We're going to go with Ragnar just because I've heard he's less popular, so I kind of want to do the less popular thing here. So we'll go with Ragnar. The next time we will play as Graven. So Ragnar won by a narrow, narrow majority. Now we could focus more on our navy. I'm not sure why we'd really want to do that. We could get another civilian workshop, but meh. Let's see. What else is down here? Do we get anything? Masters of the Ways. Factories to the Cove. Tartanlus's Gain. Terror of the Seas. That's cool. Uh, what about on the left side? We have Igniting Steel. Get arms workshop, resource efficiency gain, some caps, slaves for the coast, which looks really good, more population. Uh, looks like mostly just factories, purification stations, all this stuff looks really good. Elite slaves, ooh, they're, they're like slaves premium, or premium slaves, I like that. Monthly population, uh, raiders of the coast, scum and villainy for mobilization law, rite of passage, threat to all people, to the great beyond, doom of the wasteland, so basically this just auto makes it so that we can raise our conscription level, keeping up pace. Educated Pirates? A raid on the Heide Confederation. Cool. Educated Pirates. Wait, two slots? Oh! Okay! We might want to rush towards this. And we could. We, oh, I didn't realize we could become civilized! Oh! Savage Tossers, Tools of the Wasteland. I'm just gonna go ahead and do Ragnar the Mighty. Get more population. And then daily elite support. And more oligarchy. Graven's right hand man for the most of his life. Ragnar the Mighty surprised almost everyone when he opposed Graven in the moot. His name was not given to him without reason. Ragnar stands taller and broader than any man along the coast. Having won by a narrow margin, this beast of a man must now build a staircase out of his dead followers to climb atop Graven's throne. Uh, the practice raid. The lights of New Victoria dazzle across the water, whispering of fortune and fame. The time has come for us to grasp the fortunes and fame for ourselves. It is time to raid New Victoria. The practice raid. Uh, raiding is simple. You point a gun at some defenseless person and make them hand over their valuables. Raiding over water against a hostile nation? That's not quite as easy. Fortunately, we have a small, relatively weak nation in our former... Uh, in the former of the 
Hide a Confederation just off our coast. Let us practice our raiding arts on them to give us a better shot at our raids against New Victoria. There's an 80% chance that we are successful. Good lord, please don't lose. Don't be unsuccessful. And actually, before I forget... Oh, I want to buy more slaves, yes. But we need to buy some guns. Because sometimes I forget to do that. Because we're not looking great now. We've got achievement unlocked. Haggling. Cool. Still mobilizing, that'll be great. Eh, mobilizing maybe slightly faster. 14 people a month. At this point, we're barely making factories. We might as well do begin a scavenging program. We might as well. It doesn't really matter at this point at all. Ragnar the Mighty, we've got about 40 days left. And which we have almost can do more research right now. Boom! Nice. Let's go some tool procurement. Uh, let's grab some work as needed. As well as construction basics. Very good. Well, this episode ends. I, hopefully we can win here. I do want to get involved in at least some sort of border war, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll be honest, I've never played as Broken Coast before, so anything we do is kind of new to me. Cool. So, unfortunately, Draven is still our leader for now, for some reason. Uh, well, he's probably just got to... we got to do this focus first. So, successful raid against the Hyde Confederation. Bodies loaded the villages, bodies loaded the beach. The raids against the Hyde Confederation... Confederation were carried out without mercy, and now our men, our men, are experienced in raiding over sea as well as land. This knowledge will surely become indispensable when they turn to raid New Victoria, who will surely be better defended than this irrelevant island chain. The reason for this continued existence of Kaida Confederation are slim, so now is the time to annex them outright. Cool. And now we have this. Cool. But unfortunately, we do not have them as a core. So that's very not cool. And we're out of guns, so trying to core this is going to take a little bit more time, or at least get more compliance. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, oh my goodness. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, so I'm barely going up. And this one is going up a little bit more every single day, so be it. And establish Port Royal, Port Royal, Black Flag, Black, Black, Black Flag Fleet. Let's try saying that like five times fast. Black Flag Fleet. I'm not going to try that right now. But anyway, the duel. The taste of iron in Graven's mouth, the tear from his forehead to his chin, where the raw skin screams in agony, and the blurry set of an axe half his size plunged down into his ribcage. With his shattered ribs littering the dueling grounds like confetti, Graven's rules no more, and now none can question Ragnar's right to rule. All around him men cheer. Long live Ragnar the Mighty, slayer of Graven the Cruel. Goodbye, Graven. Gilbert becomes a naval commander. Brute the Brute becomes a unit leader. Replace Ragnar with a duel. We get more stability, more daily elite support. Change of popularity of oligarchy. Cool. So that's kind of violent, but whatever. So now we can raid. Uh, probably I'll do the Whistlers, just because I can't imagine that they would have a lot of manpower. Or divisions. They might have about the same amount as we do. Maybe. We do have 10 army XP, which is not bad. Let's see. Oh, Ragnar, but uh, I don't think Graven's going to make it. Just saying. So... He is an invader, so that's kind of cool. Uh, that stuff up there, that's okay. Root is okay. Power armor would be nice, but... Mm. We'll see what happens. This is really, how much? How many guns we got? We got 50-ish. Actually, it's kind of going down, since we do want to increase the amount of compliance we get, and less resistance that we get. Uh, and Morris. Morris, Morris. Cool. Tool procurement. Let's go improvise tools. And let's go with woodworking. That would be very good. Still mobilizing? Yes, please. All right. Raid the dredgers. Really, the whistlers are where it's at. They have up to six divisions. We could risk it. I don't want to lower this too much, though. So, you know what? Let's risk it. Let's see what happens. Actually, how much... How many factories... Factories. Divisions do they have up there? Three to eight. One to seven. Oh, that is... It's, we got... We'll try it now. We must well just try it now. Hopefully, we can... I wonder what we get if we win. Oh, we don't get stuff if we lose, but we do get stuff if we win, I believe. Let's see. Occupied territories. 13. Reclamation authority. The old rule secrets will be ours. Yes, please. Dredgers support the rabble. We lose stability. Oh, come on. Five slaves ran away? How dare you? I have no slaves now. We are slaveless. How dare you? Oh, now we need more guns. Crud. Crud. But we'll get some soon enough. Thank goodness for caps. I love caps. Uh, I might want to raise... Yeah, we could really use more stability. We might as well. The duel. Form the Broken Coast Warrior Council. More stability and more daily elite support. And call to arms. Uh, I kind of want to save that for later. Because that... Even though this would give us, like, raiding Camlo, Campaign of Terror. 
Broken Coast claims on Camelos Rivals. We can raid Alvin Bleak, which is basically fighting the Whistler. Or we can improve our relations, guarantee them, and maybe incorporate them. Which sounds like fun. I'll let you guys decide, though. Should we... Be nice with Whistler, even though we are trying to raid them? Or should we just straight up just go to war with them? I want to be very aggressive, though, in this campaign, so... Hmm, we do get more cores later on. That'd be kind of nice. Drums of War. Put to the Sword. Enemy in the North. Ooh. Dawn of a New Age. Ooh. Permanent 25% reduction in coring costs. Reuniting Coover and Seattle's Purge. Ooh, I want to purge Seattle. That sounds like fun. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and I'm going to go grab... Ooh, Plate Warriors to get more defense or get more attack. 5 versus 4 plus 3% more defense or plus... 2% more attack. I want to focus on attack very much, a whole lot, this campaign. So, let's go with Terror of the Coast. Adding spikes to our weapons and armor will not only terrify our enemies, but also give us a practical edge against our enemies. Okay, so it's only 4% more, and then after this, I think we'll begin focusing more on industry. I think that'd be a good thing to do. Slowly getting worse, which is not good. New opposition from the locals. Hey, look at that! Our recent raids in the neighboring territories have gone without a hitch. There's been only token resistance to our raiding parties from the locals, and they have managed to come back with a sizable portion of equipment, as well as some machinery and other useful items. The territory we now have raided has been left bare and bare, so we'll refrain from raiding it again anytime soon to allow the population to recover. Then we'll pillage again. We got 100 black powder pistols, 100 fish bones, 100 things of sport equipment, and an arms workshop, and a civilian workshop. That was not bad. Hey, look. Ah, oh, it's so good. I don't know, man. Maybe... Can we raid again? <laughs> oh, Brute the Brute. Oh, he's a commanding officer, so instead... Actually, I'm going to have you guys do that. There you go. And then you guys, or just you, Brute the Brute, come over here. And he's an invader, which is nice, but... Mm, does he have any upgrades here? Yes, he does. We could go... Savage Leader is probably something we really actually want. So, Power Armor, Entrenchment Speed. Let's go with Rooted. Savage Leader for more breakthrough, so we get less damage when we're attacking. It's a very nice thing. Light Touch, he's probably going to be focusing a lot on infantry, so Light Touch probably actually wouldn't be bad. So we'll do that one next. And then we shall do industry stuff, like I said. I want those two extra research slots. Oh my goodness. Full speed ahead, factory output, more construction speed. Outpost, uh, civilian workshop, another civilian workshop. Just having one to two, a couple civilian workshops is okay. It's not great. More stability actually would be pretty nice, though. I'll, I'll say that. So, form the Broken Coast Warrior Council. And then we'll do more industry, just because more stability gives you just so many more benefits. With his victory unquestioned and the remains of Graven's power base running for the hills, it's time for Ragnar to solidify his authority. He believes that the Broken Coast needs a new system of government, where only the strong can hold court. Ragnar will construct a warrior council filled with the mightiest men and women the coast has to offer, and that will decide the futures of his lands one raid at a time. Very good. And we currently get more... Uh, oh, yeah. Plus 0 0.01 more daily change for elites. Elite. Cool. Uh, call for raid. Uh, that'd be kind of nice, but we don't really need that. We could raid the dredgers. I'm a little apprehensive to do so, because they might be... Oh, they must be having... Mm -hmm. That is a lot of divisions. That is... I mean, we could risk it. I suppose we could. Is there anyone else we could go to war with? Bellingham? Cam... Oh, uh, Camlo, maybe. How strong is Camlo? Oh, they're even stronger. Oh, crud. Why does everyone have to be so strong around here? Yeah, these are the only guys that we can probably actually go to war with and maybe do well, so we'll try that. Uh, I'll put, oh wait, let's grab some organized agriculture, that be bueno. We'll raid the dredgers. I want to get you guys over there first, which would be nice. It would be very, very nice. The duel, yes. Spikes. I like the spikes. And then over here, I think I'm just going to go and grab Jester Madman because for the political power. Mostly. Just because plus 10% is not bad, and that actually can help out for the rest of the campaign, especially as we try to core more territories later on, because we're going to need to. We definitely, 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 definitely going to need to. Let's go ahead and spend the political power to raid, see what happens. I know we have one division here, and one division up here. Uh, how much extra? We have about 300. Let me see. It's going to cost us more manpower. We're going to make these guys at least 20 combat with, though. There you go. Oh, that really hurt us. Oh, boy. Undying Outcast declare one of the Forgers. We're getting more stability, which is nice. So that helps helps with output just a little bit. Just because they have more divisions doesn't mean they're better. It doesn't mean they're bad. Yeah, maybe attacking these guys might not have been a good idea. Or raiding them, we should really say. About to get paid soon, though. That's good. Let's see. Minus 204. They're slowly going down every day. That's good. Troll Warren and the Rip Breakers. Cool. Oh, boy. We're still mobilizing, which is nice, but still. 
hygiene's coming along. Let's see what happens. Okay, no opposition again. We've already read this before, so I'm not going to read it again. But, hey, you know what? I will gladly enjoy the spoils. So, I don't think I want to go to war with Camlo or do raids against Camlo or Bellingham just because they're much stronger, probably. Uh, offensive Council, we'd love to do that. Empowering Terror, I love that. It's only 2% more attack, though. Population is nice. Let's grab... Uh, workshops, arms workshops. Yeah, let's get one. Igniting Steel. It's time we get our factories up and running. We need guns for our warriors, and we have the slaves to make them. We'll have them make them. Because 4 out of 15, we can improve more civilian factories, but right now, it's not really worth it, so... Organized agriculture is good. Grab some seed selection. Because we got to get a bigger army and a stronger army. That's my main goal here. And actually, since we're kind of hanging out, go ahead and train. We need more army XP. We're going to build ourselves up and get some gliders as well, because that's the only... Well, those are the only planes we can really get for now. So, And we currently get 1.29 a day, which is pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. If we get this guy for 10% more, 1.29 becomes 1.5. So we got basically 0.21 more, and we'll use them the entire campaign. So at least in my mind, that that's worth the cost. Even though we could have selected someone else for like better, like mobilization speed or whatever or you know uh, better so we can use more factories it is what it is uh, over here let's grab some uh, warrior training that'd be cool outputs looking good we're igniting the steel go ahead and now start doing expanding the capital our grand capital must be expanded to make room for more factories to produce any and all goods we need for expansion good yeah Whistler probably is high on my list to take out very high on my list. Oh, we can oh we can raid the Federation. Uh, you know what? We'll probably do that. I don't know if we can throw all nine guys here, so give me all but like you two. Come here. You should be able to do that. You should be able to, but we'll see what happens. We could set up manual prospectors. How are how are our guns looking pretty good? And our divisions, well, they need some demo teams on them to make them really bueno, so. And we are doing, I think, asymmetric warfare. Well, we probably want to do asymmetric warfare. That'd probably be good. It just makes sense if we're playing as Vikings. So. There, there, goes, there goes those guys. There goes on Alliance. Uh, reference manuals are nice. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. Because it just makes sense for us to do this. I mean, conventional warfare with Vikings sounds kind of cool, but still. Uh, let's grab Seshit Expansion. Seshit is to become one of, the greatest, or one of our greater cities. Expanding the factories within it is only natural. We get a whole one civilian workshop. Now we're at five. Not bad, not bad. Ooh, got another division. Awesome. I saw that. Good, good, good. Oh, they have four divisions here. Oh, that's a lot of divisions. Not gonna lie. Well, we can't go to war with them. Oh, wait, they're a puppet. Okay, I didn't realize they were a puppet of the Bellingham Union. Well, let's see what happens. Seven versus four is not perfect, but that's okay. Profits from the drug trades? Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If that's the case, I want to go ahead and maybe buy some more guns first, just in case. And then maybe we'll buy some more slaves. How about that? I love slaves. 8v2, not bad. Yeah, because we can do... I'll probably focus a little bit more on this now. Call to Arms, and then Camlo Raiding Parties. Night of Horror. Breaking Camlo. We're probably going to do that next. So... Call to arms. Throughout the broken coast, pirates gather in dingy taverns and upon the decks of the ships, bickering about the letters they delivered to each of them. The broken coast has called upon all its pirates to repay their debts to the state. Great conquests lie ahead, and any man who participates will be pardoned of his former crimes, or so they say. Many men would die for such an opportunity. We'll do that, but then I'm going to spend some political power getting more guys, so. And I don't want to do this, but. Okay, so we got local opposition. Ooh, our raids can be a struggle. This raid is no exception. We've met m marked resistance from the local populations in the form of militias and even semi-professional armed units. In the instance of this raid, just our small raiding parties won't be won't cut the mustard. We need a larger dedication of forces to the region to crush these resistance and claim the loot that is rightfully ours. Throw our weight behind it. So we now have one, two, three, four, five. Just because over here, every unit leader gets one more attack, which is nice. Which would be very nice. Escalate the raid. We'll escalate the raid against Hiding Confederation into a, into a border conflict. Cannot stage a new incident against them for four months. Uh, ooh, let's go ahead and do that since I don't want them to get any more divisions there. Hopefully we can win. We did get a little bit more breakthrough through Ragnar, but it doesn't look like he's actually here. 
Oh, Clinton. Numbers. Uh, experience soldiers' losses might not be bad. Yeah, I'll do that one. Eh, we might not win here, but that's fine. Whatever. Should have got some uh, demo teams on them first. But hey, we're getting more armies, which is nice. Seed selection is good. Uh, I'll put local workspaces. We gotta do that one. We're out of guns. No, 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 no. Give me those guns. I can't force the attack. Oh, we do have six versus five. Hopefully they'll break first. Come on. Two to thirteen. Eight to forty-two. Well, Quentin Numbers is hopefully going to be learning something here. He's S. He's E. Let's see what happens. Escalate the border conflict. Oh, man, I wish we could do that. 200 political power, though, is a bit just too much. No progress on Gramshar? Come on, man. Come on. Come on, give up. Give up, please. Quentin Numbers. I should have done asymmetric warfare before this. It went back up to 65, which is nice. Oh, we kick one out. That's good. No progress. Ooh, council border conflict. Okay, not bad. We're doing pretty well so far. We got went up to 66. This is much as I'm, I'm a beginner raider. That's what I am. I'm a beginner raider. And this actually getting one more attack will help them out too. I forget exactly. Let's see. Because you get one more attack, that gives you 2.5% more attack, which is not much, but that's still okay. The frozen cabal. Far north of Cooper, near the frigid border between the coast and the dredgers, the frozen cabal hold, holds courts in a fortress of twisted ice and steel. Their ranks are filled with ghouls who are one with the endless white and ancient pirates who've seen too much. Their guidance has saved the coast many times in the past and will continue to do so long into the future. Their mere existence will make us all safer. Stability and war support? Yes. Oh, they came back more. Oh, that's not ideal. Come on, man. Come on, guys. Give it up. You don't need to win. You don't need life. Ooh, I kind of want to save up to get... Oh, man, now we're 48. I want to escalate the border conflict even more. Into war... Because I want to go to war, but we only get 1.5 every day. I can't imagine this could last for 100 days, but probably more like 75 days. It might actually last. So let's save up our political power and see what happens. Actually, if we go to war with them, that means we have to go to war with the... Uh, uh, Bellingham Union. So maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah, we're probably not going to win here. That kind of sucks. In the meantime, let's go ahead and do well-equipped army. So we can produce things faster. Unless we could come over here. Army, XP, conventional warfare. Eh, that's nice, but we don't really need that. Stubborn Bastardo. Just five war goals times. Raider recruiter. Ooh, 5% more. Nice. Punishing raider. Uh, division attack is only 5%. percent i probably go with this guy for even more attack. You know what? Let's, go, let's grab him right now. Let's see what happens. And we instantly start losing more. Ah, not good. Not good. Oh, that's not ideal. Even the Haida Confederation. Actually, are we we're attacking into mountains. Of course we would be attacking into the mountains. Yeah, we're going to lose this one. That's my fault. But it is what it is. Hmm. That's sad. Oh, well. Let's see. More stability. A uh, little bit of research speed. That's fine. Let's grab us more stability for now. Stability is so nice to have. Oh, hey, hold on. Maybe we're not done yet. Maybe we're not done. We went back up to 64. How much manpower do they have? Food preservation, 46 divisions. This is all they have. They have... Oh, they might be running out of manpower very soon. I mean, we already have quite a bit more than them, so... Hey, you never know. One of our divisions has kind of retired, though, out of the battle. Please go back. Please go back. Frozen Cabal. Nice. And I'll let you guys decide whether we do Silver Tongue Diplomacy or Raiding Alvin League. But I'm going to go with this. Offensive Council, I should have done this earlier. Only the strong sit at Ragnar's table, and only the strong serve in the Warrior Council. Truly, Ragnar has created a system of might makes right, and allows the strong and cunning to thrive. And with all their strength united under one man, this council begins to eye the coast's weak neighbors, sharpening their axes and training their personal armies for the coming days. 15% more attack. It's going to take two months. We might still be in a battle, but we'll see what happens. We probably won't be, but mm, come on. Oh, he's level four. Look at that. He's level three. And he's got levels or skill for attack. Nice. Uh, wait, that's brute though. That's brute. Oh, whoops, my bad. I was got excited. Like I thought he was learning. Hey, we're at sixty-nine. Nice, nice. Getting twenty percent more attack kind of helped out. Can I buy more guns yet? No, that's drugs. I don't care for drugs. Drugs are expensive. Let's see. West Side Economy. We gotta go well equipped army. We really need to do that. Seventy-five. A asymmetric warfare. Better reinforce rate. Let's grab foraging, which would be very nice. Very nice. We got crowd control gear, which is awesome. Let's grab some uh, eh, construction speed or clay working. Very bueno. 
Oh, we went back down to 60. Come on, get back involved. Get back involved. How do you... Why do they get more divisions in there? Can you get more divisions in there? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Our guys are tired, though. Wait, are you fighting over a river? Why is there a naval penalty? There's no river here, is there? Oh, there might be. Um, where did that come from? Wait, what the heck? Wait, what? Break the broken... Mm, what? Well, then. Okay, well, I guess, guys, stop training for now. And I'm going to go ahead and have you guys kind of kind of hang out. You know, just kind of hang out. Actually, if anything, I'm going to put you guys down here just so that you're all down here. That'd be kind of okay with me. If that's the case, I'm going to have you guys come over here. And, uh, yeah, you guys do something like this under Gilbert Bolton. Yeah, good luck. Just in case. You never know. Just in case. Just in case. So they have... Ooh, are they out of manpower? Hopefully the Shi don't actually invade us, but hey, they're out of manpower. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I want more attack. I want to help us out with so many different things. I want to get more construction speed. It might be worth getting more land auction so we can finish that up as fast as possible. Oh, how about it? No, we don't want to do that one. We got to do Raider Recruiter next. Uh, slaver. That's not really worth doing. Slave Flogger. I like that. Nothing there over here. Is there anything? Muzzles pile of guns? Meh. Tanks, APCs, ship stuff. Pretty pretty much your normal stuff. You know what? I'm just going to go and do well cooked army. We went from 5 to 8. Not bad. Local workspaces. Very good, very good. Basic tools would be nice as well. Oh, and it looks like we're probably going to lose this border war, which is a bunch of garbage. Because they keep throwing more divisions, and we can't. Which I don't understand why we can't. So, that's not very cool. Like, I don't understand why. I know it's a conflict, but if they keep throwing more divisions in, why can't we? Maybe I just don't understand border conflicts, but you know what? We have the Defensive Council, which gives us 50% more attack. And we shall finish this episode with... What? Let's go with Camo Raiding Parties. After we do factories to the cove. The cove is a prime location for expanding our industry. It is a natural protection and a good staging point between our fleets. Cool. But unfortunately, that's going to end today's episode, my friends. If you'd like to consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we're probably going to lose the battle against the Heide Confederation. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.